yeah. Lorraine Rogers with lesson four of A to Z of watercolour painting. Now you've tried the flat washes and last lesson we put the mountains on the landscape like so. So now I'm going to take you through on how to build this up. So remember this is 300 GSM watercolour paper. Don't use anything from the junk shop or anything thinner than that. If you try and practice on butcher's paper or um, the kids paper from school, you're not going to have any success. So you're wasting your time really. You just need that watercolour paper from your local art supply. So we're going to completely change this now and I'll give you a few options of how you can do that. Uh, first of all we need to mix up a green. I never buy green out of a tube, always mix my own greens. So I start with burnt sienna, um, I did outline my colours in lesson one, so if you've forgotten go back and have a look at that. Burnt sienna is a beautiful colour when it's uh, mixed with a lot of water. Um, I mix a dark green first, so I want quite thick burnt sienna. It has dried out a bit in my palette, and that's one of the good things about watercolour. You can, if it dries out, you can just go back and add a bit of water. It's not like you dried out oil paints that you have to throw away. Same with acrylic. You can just freshen them up with a bit of water. Unless, of course, they've been sitting there for 10 years, but we hope that's not going to happen. So, with the burnt sienna, I'm combining phthalo blue. Now phthalo blue is a very strong staining colour, so you want to take it easy with that, just add a little bit at a time. So phthalo blue and burnt sienna make this lovely, I'll call it gum, cre gum tree green. And um, if we want to make a lighter green, we take what's left in the brush from mixing that dark and add a little bit of Indian yellow to that. As you can see, I don't bother about keeping my paints really clean in my palette unless I'm doing a clean wash, in which case I would put out fresh colours. Uh, so by adding a little bit of Indian yellow, if you haven't got Indian yellow, um, any of your yellows would be fine. So there I've got my dark green and I've got my lighter green. Now if I add that lighter green to that raw sienna, It'll give me a lovely sort of dry grass green colour. Like so. So I've got my three greens, my dark, my mid and my light green. I'm going to use this light green to put a third layer on my landscape and kind of sculpt the landscape. So this is now my lightest green. And I've got plenty of water in there, so it's not thick paint. And I'm going to put the paint on in the direction that the land slopes. So if the land's flat, you have your brush strokes flat. If the land's hilly, you have the brush strokes going in the direction of the hills or the direction that the the foliage would be running down the hills, whether it's grass or or trees or whatever. And if you try and leave some lights, in other words, that underneath wash shining through in some areas, so there you go, fairly basic. Now with my dark green and my little, um, this is a quarter inch brush, or actually one eighth inch brush, lovely little thing. I'm only doing a small landscape so I'm going to get my one inch, my one eighth of an inch brush and just put some distant trees on the horizon. Now in some areas I'm using the flat of my brush, so basically laying it down like so. And 
and in other areas I'll use the tip of my brush to make sort of tree like shapes. You don't want to be too fussy about this because it is in the distance after all. But try and not make your shapes too repetitive. An interesting mix of shapes. So, like so. Um, now on the edge of the road, we could, because this wash is still wet, if you put it on wet enough it will stay wet for a little while. Just put some little edges along there. And you notice I'm laying my brush down on the side. The last thing you want to do is actually make little grassy shapes like you see children doing uh, because they'll never really be very convincing. And remember you want to exaggerate that perspective. In other words you want your track at the front to be a lot wider than your track going back. Now when this dries, we could put on a wash of burnt sienna, thereby warming the foreground. So you've got the cool background and when this is dry, if we put on a wash of burnt sienna, it'll warm the foreground and bring it forward. So we'll save that for the next lesson. So remember, come and visit me at www.sidewalk-gallery.com.au and good luck.